welcome. In today's video, you're gonna be equipped with how to improve your dashboards, especially around the visualizations with line charts. Take something boring like this, a very simple two axis line chart, nothing special about it, and how we can turn it into something that's beautiful, sexy, intentional, like this. It's an area chart with an inverted axis, uh, intentional colors, smooth lines, or a beveled stepped bottom. Uh, there's lots of nuances in the formatting here. I'm gonna walk you through every step to have an intentional chart that's gonna take something boring and turn it into something awesome. Let's go. All right, so here we are. Let's look at the dashboard. Here's the goal. We have an area chart. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to build it. What we don't want is something like this, a very basic line chart, both showing the exact same information, by the way. If you're looking at something, do you wanna see this, or would you rather see this? And I'm gonna tell you about it here. So what we're gonna do in this video is first, dive into the data so you just understand it at a high level, then we're gonna talk about the differences between these charts, then we're gonna build it. You will have every step. This file is saved in the repository in the link in the description. Uh, so open it up, follow along. If you find it helpful, like, subscribe, uh, let's go. So here we go. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be trending data over time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my cursor animation just so we can follow this on a little bit. And if we look in the bottom left-hand section, <laughs> there's gonna be a table. So what this data has, and I'll zoom in on it for this case, just so we can kind of get the first gist, is when we're looking at this data, <clears throat> it's gonna be a very simple measure. So we're gonna have a date on the right-hand side, we're gonna trend by date, and then for every date, there's a number of items sold, or an amount, 44,000, a number returned, and then a net sales, which is the variance of the two, $24,000. So in this case, I'm gonna represent the net sales in the bottom, so you'll see that. And then there's also a number of units returned. So I wanna see how they can relate. How do they relate the idea of net sales and units returned? So you can see in this chart, now if I zoom back out, what's cool about it is at the bottom, it's showing the net sales. 27,000, you can hover over it, you can see all the details for the tooltips. But then what's interesting is you can notice on the days that have a lower sales, the actual units returned are much higher. Units return count 948. So this dips from the bottom. It's coming this way to show you, hey, things are going down. It's using the top axis and it's filled. And that's why this is less. Note this is more. So when you want to represent something that has, you know, an increased amount over time, like a net sales, against something that, that does have a variential difference, usually negative, well, what the default visual is, is something like this. And this is where you have net sales, and it's showing the same amount changing every single day. But then when you have the units returned, I mean, it looks like it's going up. It's hard to tell what in the heck's going on with this chart. That's why this is so important. I can see, I can color it, I can do everything we need to do, so we're gonna build it. And uh, what we can also do is obviously with any chart that we create, we wanna have it interacting with the visuals in the dashboard. So you can see that there's filters up here. I could filter by the number of customers. All this can change. These, these actual slicers show the number of customers in the category, which is cool. Uh, there's a video about slicers. You can click it here in the top right corner and you can, uh, you can follow along with that too. But what we're gonna do now is dive into it. So we looked at the data. I'm going to uh, delete this because we already know what we're dealing with. And what we're gonna do now together is build this chart. How do you get to this? How do you get from this to something cool like this? Well, I'm gonna show you starting right now. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create a new chart and not a line chart. We're not gonna do a line chart. We're gonna do an area chart. I love area charts. It's just such a cooler way. You have super control over it. The way it feels, the way it looks cool, I, I just really dig it. We're gonna do the same basic axis. So what that is, is there's a date hierarchy. Let's go ahead and add that to the uh, X. Oops, the wrong one, X. So we're gonna have dates spanning from left to right. And now we wanna have two measures. We wanna have the net sales. I'm gonna add that to uh, the Y axis. And then I wanna have the units returned, add that to the secondary axis. At first, you see we have just a dot. Well, why is that? 
That's because uh, we have to drill down. So because I have in this a date hierarchy, which is what I love, by the way, uh, it's going to start from year, quarter, month, day. And you can drill down into both of those by going down one level in the hierarchy here. So as we go down, we're to the day level, <clears throat> we can see we start to have a shape of what this could potentially look like. But we need to do some formatting. And these formatting steps are critical. They just make everything seem smoother, more intentional. Red's bad, green's good. The thickness of the lines. I'm just gonna show you intentionally how to control these things so you can apply your own tastes and your own you know, styles to your, to your charts and dashboards, but it's important that you understand how to do them. So let's get into it. Firstly, I'm gonna walk through all of these. We're gonna make this mirrored uh, solution. Size and style, what I've started to like and kind of learn about is that the soft edges, they just look cool, man. It kind of softens everything up a little bit. So to control that first size and style, uh, we can turn on the visual border and put on some rounded corners. <clears throat> make this white, because it's already white. A nice rounded corner. Okay, that's you, you set that up how you desire. One thing I also like to then do is I'm gonna go through each of these categories. So that's size and style, title. I do not want to ever use titles unless I know that what the people are looking at is not intuitively understood. When you look at this chart up top, I can see it's time, I can see it's net sales, I can see it's return count, I can even double see it on the left and right. I don't need some title to tell me that, that's wasting space. Follow that same principle. So what we're gonna do is click this, see ya, no title. Now we have more space, so let's keep going. Uh, the title is updated, the axis. We'll do the same thing, we'll start with the x-axis, <clears throat> left to right. I don't need to know that these are dates. I can understand that. So we're gonna turn off this title, save space. Also, I really care about the day. So it is helpful to segment days into months, but this extra space of quarter, I don't wanna see it. See ya, get, get rid of ya. Good, so now that's cleaned up. Let's look, let's keep going at the y-axis. Uh, this one is a little bit different. <clears throat> this one, it actually is quite important to have a, uh, a title because there's gonna be a left axis and a right axis. And uh, they're gonna be different. This one's gonna go up Obviously, this one's going down. They're different increments, different, different setups. And since we remove the title above, we wanna keep that. So what you can do with these titles in these sections is let's update them. So what I know is this axis, the Y axis, is gonna have values. I like to make them small. Also, everything on this side is gonna eventually be green. Green means good, it's a total amount of stuff. Let's, add, let's change that color. If you wanna make it bold, you can make it bold, you can make it pop out a little bit more, but I don't think you need to just for the axis. Uh, now for the title of it, <clears throat> you can see this is called net sales amount. This is called net sales dollars. Well, let's change the title so it's applicable. Net sales amount, boom, hit that up. Make it green, green for good. Make the size smaller. And for this one, it's smaller font, I like to make it bold. Again, we're just making certain things pop out, making things a little bit more cleaned up. So now as we keep going, we're going to, and what you'll see here, what I just did there, uh, when I looked at the axis, I saw that the increments were different. There's a dynamic amount of space that, that Power BI uses to take up. When this was smaller, just slightly, it went 0, 50, 100. Well, if you just play with the height of things, it will automatically adjust, you know, a little bit more, boom, a little bit more granular axis. I like it, it looks good. Let's keep going. <clears throat> So now we have that y-axis set up. Let's look at the secondary one. I wanna be intentional with color. Always be intentional with color. Green's good, red's bad. The most primitive understanding of colors that there are. So with this, I want the values over here as well to be small, but I want the secondary axis values, which are these, to be red for bad. It's going down. We don't want that to happen, that's bad. The title. Let's switch this up. We want the title to also be red to signify these are bad things. Make it bold, make it pop out. And there you go. So we have the left and right side kind of formatted uh, the way we want intentionally. Let's keep moving. The legend. This with lines and intentionality in the middle is way cooler than this thing on the left-hand side with circles. It's not applicable. So going through every element of a visual and changing it 
It's clutch. It's important. You got to do it. So we're going to go to the legend. I want this in the top center. People are going to go to this chart, look at the top. There's no title. I took it away. Uh, I need something to tell them what's going on. The most simple thing is with colors and words. Cor make the correlation at this point. Top center, the marker. I want it to be a line. Lines look cooler. These are lines that will be down here. Uh, for the text, the values, uh, we can make the same thing bold. But what you'll notice, and this is where for what, you can set up templates to adjust this, but by default, some fonts are DIN, some fonts are Sugoi, Sugoi, whatever, you, however you pronounce it. We'll make them the same. You don't want to have different fonts all over the place. So I think this axis was DIN. I'm going to set these to DIN as well. It just brings everything together, keeps it the same, 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 same around the perimeter. Do the same thing. Keep the same font. Change it. But now, just like the other things, I don't need to have a legend title. If you wanted to, you could put the title here. But I don't need to say this is the legend. It's obvious. Get rid of things that are obvious. See ya. Net sales units returned. Pretty straightforward. Um, one thing you'll see here too is that on the left hand side, I could change it to net sales amount. Up here, it still says net sales dollar sign. Up here, it says net sales amount. How do I make that change? This is what you do. The legend is going to read the value that you've placed in here. So you can rename this without changing the title on the right hand side or in your data model to change those things. So this is where I'm going to go net sales amount, boom, units returned. Count, perfect. And look at that. So we're moving along. What I'm gonna do now is we have to be specific with how we set these things up. Small multiples, there's no small multiples. I'll do another video on small multiples, but that's essentially where you can take one chart and create eight of them real quick in a smaller subsection if you have like a dimension you wanna divide it by. We won't mess with that now. Uh, the zoom slider, this can be actually cool, depending upon what you want to set up with the granularity, how many dates, how many things you have. But if you add something like this, it will just allow the users to more easily zoom in, zoom out of certain sections of the chart. You can put it on the, the labels, the, the axis, you know, the, the tool, you can put it all over the place. So it is a cool enhancement for this chart. I don't need it, but if you run out of space, add it. It will allow people to more easily interact with your situation. Okay, so we're going to keep going. The lines are going to be the funnest thing to format. But one thing that we have to think about are the grid lines. So just to see where they are, if I turn these to say red or something, here are the grid lines. There's grid lines on this axis right here, not on this one. Grid lines can be good if you have one axis because they're always going to correlate. But you're not going to have grid lines for this axis and grid lines for this and have a bunch of lines over the place. So in this case, it's actually better to not have any grid lines, get rid of them. It cleans it up. Having grid lines on there confuses things, remove them. Uh, again, not intentional, get rid of it. So let's go now into lines. <clears throat> Here's where it's cool. You can control each series. These are the subtleties and I'm just intentionally doing this so you can pick your own design choices. On the net or the units returned, you'll see it's a smooth line going over time, very smooth, very fluid. The bottom one is more rigid, like a bar chart, where the value is intentionally underneath it. It's stacked up. You can kind of see how that is. So I'm going to show you how to set that up so you have the capability to adjust it for any chart you want in your own way. I'm going to come to this chart, the series. You can pick them now. So I'm going to start with the net sales amount, the bottom one. The line style, let's make it a little thicker. But this is where you can kind of choose if you want it to be dashed or dotted. Maybe we'll change this one up where the um, top one's dotted just to, to make it a little different. But we're gonna go solid like bar chart here. So with this, the line type is where you can set this up. Step it, stepped line chart. It makes it look like a chart now, it's very cool. Let's go to the units returned. For this one, we want to have uh, the smooth line type. Very smooth, make the width a little bit bigger, four. But now we'll change the color of this one too for red. Red is bad, but there's a big difference in the transparency. What's going on there? We're gonna show you how to adjust that as well. You can't have it too full. You won't be able to see labels and things around it. So we have that set up. Now what we can do is if we go to select all, oh, we also wanted to change it up into the line style 
dashed, dotted. We'll just try dash just for fun. Actually, I kind of like solid. We're going to keep it solid. We're going to go back to all. And now with the shade area, you can play around with this transparency. So you can set this transparency to how you like it. By moving this transparency, I can tell I actually picked a slightly different color up here. So I'm going to come back to here and I look and I liked the color this. So I'm going to come back to this chart, change this to that same color, put the transparency about where I think it should go, somewhere like that. Again, slide around, play with it, see what you think. When you add the labels, it'll be more intentional about where you set that transparency. But there you go, now you got it. Another thing that you could consider adding as well is, I'm gonna move, make some space, is the markers. Uh, they're little dots. You know, if you need to see them, in the case for what I've created, I feel like I didn't want to see them, you might wanna have them. And maybe you wanna control where you see them. Maybe you just have them on the line chart, which could be important. The beveled or the stepped, I'm sorry, we know it's actually gonna be um, always uh, the section that it's covering because it's flat, but the lines kind of move. So in this case, let's do this. The series, you just returned. Well, we're gonna have uh, them off on the net sales amount and the units returned, let's add them. And let's say that circle does look pretty sharp. Let's try it. Cool. So that shows up now. And maybe the, the dot of the marker, make it pop even more. Look at that. We'll change it up. And I'm going to get a little crazy. Let's go back to the, the series units returned and change this to dotted. So it, that looks kind of cooler. I'm gonna keep it now. See, if you, when you go deeper into stuff, you just keep learning more. I like it. So now we have that set up. We're gonna get to the data labels. Data labels are extremely important. There was recently a release that allowed us to update these data labels and use them in different ways. What do I mean by that? There's more control over the, fil the functionality of them. You can see when I first added them on, they're kind of all over the place. It's harder to see exactly what's happening here. So we're gonna go, update them one by one. Uh, again, when you just add them, lots of numbers, but here there's some intentionality. So for this, let's start by the series all, the value, let's make sure they're small. Hey, we wanna take up as little space as possible. Now we can pick the series. So I'm gonna go to first net sales amount and let's start with the position. The position is gonna be, is it gonna be under or over automatic? For this section, there's always gonna be a bar, there's always gonna be space underneath it. I want them under. It's gonna to start to lock in, that's where these things go. Now, the value itself, let's put that color to the same dark green, make it bold so they kind of pop out. But what you'll see is that uh, we have space. So when we have space, Let's not, let's use it so it's not just dead space. What I mean by that is the decimal places, let's just add one. Now we can really see intentionally a little bit more detail about each of these. It's looking good. I made it green because it fits the same color as the border. The way these things look are important. You need to have them look good. Now let's change the units returned. We're gonna do that by going back up to the series and change units returned. Same deal, the value's already small, but let's make it red. Or this is actually different, it's white. I made an inverse color, so here's why. Here's what's cool. There's an additional detail layer where you can set the background. In this case, I'm gonna put the background color to be that dark red. I'm gonna mess with the transparency in a minute to kind of see where I like it. But now I'll put the font to white so it just really separates and just draws your eye to see this is the, the value for the bars, this is the value for the lines. It really helps. And actually, I love the dot. The dot calls out this is a specific point in time, it shows it, it's pretty darn cool. So again, the more you build stuff, the more you'll just start to see things you like. Now, let's go play with the background color, uh, the transparency. I'm gonna try to get it actually in this version to kind of match the dot, a little bit more intentional. I guess if I really tried to match it, it'd look like that. That's a little heavy. So we're gonna go with slight transparency. And look, that's actually cooler than the first one. The idea that these values are really now seen, they correlate to the red dot, these subliminal correlations 
always make things look better. Uh, and now we build a pretty sweet, sick chart. If I hover over this one though, there's one thing, there's more intentionality in the tooltip. I can see additional attributes, not just the two lines of the, the net sales amount and the units returned, but also additional things like the sold number, the return number, unit sold. This one doesn't have that, so let's add it. And here's how we add it. It's easy. When you go to the visual, there's gonna be a tooltip section at the bottom. So now very simplistically, pick other things you want to have added in there. In this case, I wanna see the tooltips to say the sold amount, I wanna see the return amount. And again, you could add whatever else you want. As you add it, it will show up there. Uh, sold, return, there's the net, units return count. Let's just see the sold count. Then we have kind of the whole picture. Now that is looking pretty cool. So if we keep going, uh, there's a couple of other sections we can look at editing if we feel like it. Obviously the backgrounds, we're not gonna mess with that. You can add reference lines, different styles, if you wanna see certain averages, points, that kind of stuff. Uh, in this case, I don't want them in the chart. I kind of get what's happening, but if we just added one for the sake of it, like an average line, now you can see where it's applying. There's an average line, here's the average. Uh, and we could even add the label to it too, which can be really helpful too. If I come down here, turn the label on, and it's right there. So decimal units will go none, decimal place is zero, and the color zero. We'll make the color actually black. So that kind of stands out for the average across every single day, uh, which is another data point that I previously didn't have, but you know what? I actually kind of like it. So I think I'm gonna keep it here as well in the data label, make it green. Uh, the line, you know, I do like that it's dotted. Um, maybe we can rec decrease the transparency so it kind of pops out a little bit more. We could also say, let's be totally different and set this to be like purple. And, but we want it to correlate. So we'll keep it at this green, actually. We'll keep it at the green and dashed in front. Let's see what we'll go behind. There you go. And we have that, that label. So that's actually a nice little addition um, to quickly see the average of the green. It's all intentional. We can see what that value is. Uh, so there you go. Pretty cool. Another addition by getting into it. So there you go. You just went from building a standard line visual like this to in 20 minutes creating something that looks seriously awesome like this. So thank you for watching. Enjoy Power BI. Check out my other videos. Hit me up with any questions. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.